Okay. Uh, this is chapter 14, clinking. And um, so what we are going to see is what is clinking, how it can be used to interpolate spatial data, and how to perform clinking in R. What is clinking? Okay. It's a, a geospatial interpolation technique. Um, basically, what's happened is that uh, um, there are um, a certain number of observed values uh, on a territory. And what we want is to be able to understand what, uh, what could be the most probable uh, new um, data within this territory. So in order to identify this new information, which we don't have, uh, what we do is basically interpolating uh, the value that we got, applying a model to find the most probable new locations. Okay, so uh, it is used to estimate the value of a variable at an observed location based on the value of the variable at nearby locations. So clinking is based on the assumption that spatial correlation between values and the variable decreases with distance. So if we are looking at for example, uh, infectious uh, diseases, and we have a land where we observed some uh, spots of uh, infectious people, individuals, uh, and, and those, those people can be are located uh, around within the territory. So the, the new locations were the most probable new location of the infection um, will be uh, highly correlated within uh, the closest distance to the observed value, so the value that we uh, start with. And the more we go farther uh, from this observed value, uh, uh, the more the correlation decreases. And so the correlation decreases with distance. Clinking is uh, widely used to interpolate spatial data when data are sparse, and most, mostly uh, and irregularly distributed, and so where uh, there is, uh, you know, uh, so the grid is quite a sort of uh, like sparse with the observed values, and so we want to um, uh, fill up uh, with with most probably new values. Uh, there are uh, various type of clinking, and the the this, you, you know the, mo the most the uh, most used one are simple clinking, ordinary clinking, and universal clinking. So as you can see, uh, let's start with the uh, ordinary clinking. We have a formula, okay, and this is uh, uh, as, um, the, the, in this case, basically what we do is uh, considering the mean value of the, the variable um, um, the, uh, so we basically calculate the mean value of the two two closest points. and so that that would be a new value that is, is the most probable one. And um, so we do this by uh, summing. Uh, so it, it is, it's, it's a sort, it's a mean, uh, it's an average. Uh, and where we have lambda, which are the weights, lambda uh, i, which are the weights, and uh, the z, are the observed values. So basically we multiply the observed value by a weight. And this weight is um, what we uh, consider when we do the variogram, because this weight is based on the, the variance, uh, most probable variance, uh, the level of the variance 
uh, that might arise within our observed values. So the other type of crinking, uh, such as simple and universal, as you can see, uh, there is a slightly modification, so an adjustment to the ordinary uh, formula. Uh, and so we assume, for example, in simple crinking to know what is the mean. And so we search around the mean value to a, a new value that we'd be interpolating uh, within the mean. So the mean is uh, known and constant across the stu study area for simple crinking, while universal crinking, the, the, the mean is unknown. And so we model uh, the, to find the most probable value, most suitable value for the mean. And we use uh, like beta x, a simple uh, model formula, linear model formula, which we add to our crinking uh, model interpolation. So basically it's an interpolation. So we search for the minimum distance um, between two values, we grab the mean, and then if we apply ordinary mean, ordinary crinking, we stop there. If we do simple crinking, then we assign this mean, and then we sum uh, and subtract uh, this value to search a new one. And if we do universal crinking, then we adjust further with a model formula where uh, beta are the coefficients and x are the value of the covariates. Then so, we might... so in yeah. fact, we are in universal creaking, we are then um, creaking the residuals, right? Of the model. Yeah. And uh, we can use other predictors or covariates. Yeah. Yeah. In the yeah. I, I, yeah. It, it is like uh, a further, uh, sub, it's like simple creaking perhaps, but then the mean is replaced by a modeled mean, which can be, which can vary, vary across uh, the area, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. More or less, this, I, it's an adjustment uh, of the ordinary creaking. Uh, and so this is what's happened uh, anytime when you starting from a simple model with a linear regression, and then you add, subtract, uh, um, you know, uh, terms uh, with this, um, into, in various ways, such as adding a function, adding, uh, which can be an interpolation uh, and many things. So uh, adjustment of the, the base, uh, model function. Okay, so we said that uh, crinking is an interpolation technique. Okay, and in R, we can safely use GSTAT package, uh, even if it's uh, under review. Uh, and so here is um, um, data um, about air quality. And so I jump to R. Okay, can you, you should see my R. Yeah, okay. Okay, so um, this, uh, um, we need to also load the SP package. Okay, so we load, the GSTAT, uh, let's uh, do this. Okay, we also loaded the GSTAT and the SP package. The, there are two things that I wanted to show you. Um, this data muse, okay, which is not found because I didn't, okay, is this one here, okay? It's quite a common data set, which is used to show how to do crinking, um, but it contains uh, a certain number of observations under the 55, 14 predictors. We have longitude and latitude. 
And we have some, um, pro, um, you know, uh, product information such as uh, zinc, which is the one that we uh, work with. And then uh, there are others such as uh, distance, elevation, uh, land use, and so on. So if I use the coordinate function on this data, what's up? Uh, okay, what's happened here? Uh, that uh, basically I'm I'm going I'm selecting I'm assigning x and y on the from the original data to be coordinates. So now when I open uh, my data set, you see something changed. I don't have X and Y anymore, but I have the coordinates. And then, so this is now class uh, special points data frame doing this way. Okay, so I need to transform it to data frame to select just the, the um, variables that are of my interest. And as you can see, when I transform it, you can retrieve, you can select X and Y again. Okay, this is a nice trick because you can uh, apply crinking by using special uh, this type of data or uh, just a data frame. Uh, we haven't uh, said what is this, um, oops, what class was this um, in original was a data frame. Then with coordinate, uh, it's now, a special points data frame. So I need to assign it back to be a data frame to select uh, and have back this, this data. And I'll show you why uh, I'm doing this. So now this is what, what uh, we are interested in. Uh, the, the first uh, thing is suggested is now, uh, before applying any models and things, we need to have a look at the data. So how they perform within um, the special points. And so uh, I plotted with ggplot, uh, longitude and latitude, and colored by my uh, response variable, which is zinc. And so we can see that this is the um, uh, distribution within the area, of course. So it cannot be points, cannot be here, cannot be there, because this is uh, these are special points. And so we expect to, to have this area, but we don't know that. So we need a grid now to see what, what are the boundaries of the most probable locations. And so uh, we use the grid, means data uh, grid, which is uh, another data, um, data frame, uh, which doesn't contain any information about zinc, for example, because this is just a grid of the territory where we are plotting the data. And so we can do the same as before uh, and with points, and now we have a grid. So our zinc can be found whatever within this area. So when, if we plot one on top of the other, we can see that where we got the, the, uh, the starting points, so our observed values, and, and perform crinking. Thinking about what is the best type of model to apply, because there are various types of models. And so what's gonna happen that crinking going to interpolate these points to find the most suitable new points within the shortest distance. Okay, so let's go back. Uh, I'll, I think I'll, I'll do it here. Okay, so, uh, and um, in order to 
uh, find uh, this point, we need to consider what would be the, the, the variation, okay, that can arise within these uh, new locations, most probable location. And in order to do that, we, we need to calculate, consider the variance or uh, so the variation of the residuals, okay? Uh, and so the variance is basically the, instead of calculating the mean value uh, with um, ordinary crinking, we're now calculating the variance. Okay, as you can see, Z is the uh, our observed values, and we do this uh, um, based on a, a certain lag h of the distance. Okay, we establish, we, we set this value, okay? So we need to um, think about what, what would be the best value in order to, to perform the best variogram. But if we just apply uh, the variogram function on the, um, a little transformation of our response variable, because if I do, uh, I don't do log, okay? These values are not um, a show, are showing too much uh, distance within each other. So with a log transformation, we basically reduce the variance uh, on a mm, more um, visible way. And it is also uh, more computation, computational feasible for the model to work with. Uh, and so we apply the log because creating a variogram model which means uh, calculating the variance of our observed value is applying a model. And so we do this uh, with a formula. We have already seen that on the data. And there are two options, cloud true or cloud false. So cloud true show us all the um, we already said that, no? Okay, all the um, options, okay? While cloud false, it shows the, uh, the, the um, actually what, what is the, the shape the, of the distribution, okay? In fact, this one here is a spherical um, type of model. Okay, this is spherical for spatial data. And where do we specify that? When we fit our variogram object, we specify that the model has to be spherical. And in the uh, book, uh, if we do like that, Okay, we can see all the options. Uh, in this case, uh, uh, SPH is spherical, but it can be exponential, nugget, or Gaussian, um, linear. Okay, this is the case for a spherical uh, type of um, model. For example, we can specify a range and a nugget. Okay, so this line is the fitted line of the variogram. Okay, so we say that the variogram is modeling the variance of our observed values. Okay, and this is a model on the model of the variance that show us what uh, could be uh, um, a new uh trend the the distribution of the variance okay C can be down here or up here depending on the uh, different um 
parameters that we set inside this uh, biogram function. We can even apply um, other, other level of, of these parameters. Now, if I use my data as I did it here, this won't be suitable if I just plug in inside uh, my gstat function. Okay, so the gstat function is, now that we have seen what are the data, we have established uh, with a variogram, what is the shape of the uh, distribution of the variance uh, and moderate the variance. Now we do crinking. So we're now interpolating the data, plugging in the distribution of the variance. Okay. And we, do, we can do that with the gstat function. The gstat function doesn't do just crinking. Okay. If you set the other options, you can do um, interpolation distance, weights, you can calculate in general. Um, crinking is a, a bit more uh, like focus on prediction of the new values. So you are not only interpolating, but you are inter uh, interpolating the data with the scope of predicting new values. So you are minimizing the error. Um, and so you can do crinking with the gstat function or with the cringe function. Okay, I didn't know that cringe function. It's not in the book, I think. It's uh... yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, I think the uh, uh, difference with the simple interpolation techniques of the previous chapter is that this Regan uh, technique uses a variogram model to, to do the interpolation. I think that's uh, an, an important thing. And also, indeed, it, it provides uncertainty yeah, in its okay. prediction. Yes. The, the, I don't know the Creek function. Okay. The, the, um, uh, when you do, when you use this uh, gstat function, then you use the predict. So the gstat function and then predict. And this is the output. So you have the prediction, then you can plot it. And these are the results. Okay. So you have this and that. If you use just cringe function, you do just crinking. You, you you don't do any other type of uh, simple interpolation. And you don't need to use the predict. You use just king. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, Why yeah. In, in here, I made a, a, a library modification. Instead of putting the data, I've put the prediction Okay, so what I what I did here now I'll run everything again. So it's performing uh, crinking with the gstat and then predict the value, plot the result and see that the zinc values are uh, ha higher. Uh, here um, on the north west uh, on the south east okay uh, while the variance is more is located uh, in other areas so particularly here we need to consider that also the variance is um, of a certain level Based on this result, I perform crinking again on the prediction. Okay, so run this and uh, plotting the result, we can see that now we have 
uh, predictions and variants, which are uh, like about the same, but uh, increase it somehow for exactly where, um, as you can see. It has a higher resolution? Yeah. So this is done on the prediction, okay? Instead of using the data. And one, the last thing is that you need to consider that, um, for example, here, there is a transformation from a special point to a simple feature and a specification of the coordinates system. If you perform this, you need to be sure that you do the same for the grid, because otherwise, uh, you know, they, they do not recognize it, each other. And also uh, consider that if you have, uh, uh, there is different type of coordinates. Um, so you have two types of coordinate system, lat long and UTM. So usually the best way to perform crinking is to have three, so check the data, to have three to five um, decimals after the um, value of the longitude and the latitude, okay? This is a very important, uh, the quality of the data. So here in this case, we use data that are already settled, so we can use them straight away. But in case with new data, you might want to filter out those value which are not that precise in terms of decimals. And so you might want to prefer long lat to UTM. And so you want to, because you can perform UTM if you are focused on one zone, so you can use UTM. But if the your data is, uh, spans to more than one zone, you need to use lat long. And so you make sure that you do the transformation and consider the decimals to a certain level. Um, and in summary, uh, so we can estimate with crinking the value of a variable at an observed location. And we have said that there are different types of crinkings, uh, even co-crinking, a further adjustment. And then like, you, you can for, perform uh, crinking with the GSTAT package. Yeah, that's all I've got. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. Yeah, I, I have to look into the create function and uh, to understand better uh, the second step with the predicted results. And then I have to try out myself. Thank you. Okay.